on, Larry. What is this, eh? Is it the fifth time this year, is it? This is it. Six, oh yeah, well. No one listening to me. Look, Larry, look, put some pants on at least. There's some little old ladies down there. You're putting them off their teeth. It's not funny. All right, George, go on, take your time. Any time between now and Christmas will do. Keep from talking, Jack. Almost there. What is it then? Is it the old National Health Service again, is it? Bloody NHS. It's a joke. <laughs> for five minutes and look what happens. I'm just getting old. And clumsy. Mm. Mullet's out there clucking like a mother hen. Oh, God, don't let him in. Tell him I've died, gone to heaven. Heaven is not going to be an option for the likes of you and I, George. Anyway, talking about angels, Mary's on her way here. Oh, for Pete's sake, Jack, she'll just make a fuss and worry herself to death. Mullet told her, did he? Well, it wasn't me, was it? Well, I suppose he had to. You were out cold in the ambulance. Well, you better make yourself scarce. And get me out of here, will you? You just do as the medics tell you. I'll go back and get the bacon sardines organised. Mm. In that case, my wallet's in my jacket. Oh, all right. <laughs> Hello, Mary. George is asking for you. Hello, Jack. I might have known he was with you when he got hurt. We need to talk. George, the one could have been seriously injured. And the fire officer's report says that you released your safety harness to try to reach the man on the ledge. Have you no sense? I didn't realise they'd put up a jump mattress, did I? Anyway, I thought that I was the only chance he had. And he could have been killed. Yeah, well, I wasn't, was I? Anyway, George was just unlucky. He'll be all right. He's a tough old boy, isn't he? Jack, you have broken half a dozen guidelines again. Now, it's me and the chief constable who'll be taken to court for breach of health and safety regulations. Oh, health and... Look, here... Uh, it's what we do. It's the job. I want a full report on my desk before the end of the day. Yes, sir. You missed some dry rot in there. deal with things now, and uh, I just want you to know that. All right. That's good. I'll bear that in mind. Hi, Steve. Lucy, how's things going? I'm supposed to go and sleep over at a friend's tonight. My name's Carl's broken down, so she won't let me go. We can talk about this later. Helen, look, if it's any help, I could take Lucy. That'd be cool. Uh, I'm not sure that's a good idea, Lucy. Honestly. No, no. Um, your mum's right. Not really appropriate. My fault. Sorry. Another time, perhaps. Mum, this is pathetic, honestly. I, um, uh, I thought you were told to keep clear of Helen and Liz. Why do you own business? They, they, they don't need your kind hanging around them, Mark. You may think you're some kind of do-gooder, but to me, you're just a pious bastard who thinks he's better than everybody else. I will do what Helen wants me to do. You stay out of it. I thought he was 
uh, yesterday's news. He might get himself sorted. Maybe we'll give it another try after that. He's never been good enough for you, Helen. None of them ever are, are they? I don't know. Well, where should I look? I don't know. Well, if you were me, where would you look? I've no idea. Well, thank you very much for being very helpful, Trig, I'm sure. Oh, how is George, by the way? He's fine. I really need that those... That was some fall, that was. He could have been killed, you know. Yeah, thank heaven for all that rubbish that broke his fall. Look, I need... Well, to... None of us are getting any younger, you know. No, not standing here, we're not. Come on, chop, chop. Tonight, I told you, Sheila Brackley can't do the flowers for the church festival, so I said I'd go down tonight and make a start. Yeah, right, no, I've forgotten that. Yeah. I'll probably be finishing late, so don't wait up when you get back. No, all right. I, um, I saw Steve Markham today. He was chatting to Helen. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, I, I thought it was done and dusted between those two, and Helen says she still fancies him. You didn't say anything, did you? Well, she's your sister, and I suppose it's like these troubles, you know. Her life, Bill. You should talk to her, all right? And Helen can be a difficult woman when she wants to be. You can't interfere. She can look after herself. Uh, bye. What? That boy I fancy screwing around. She's supposed to be my friend. How could she say those things? Maybe the boy is what you think he is. So what? It's my decision if I want to go out with him or not. You should know how that feels with you and Mum. See if I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Thanks for coming to get me. Your friend's probably just jealous, that's all. You had no right to phone Steve. Well, I need to get home in a hurry. Can I go get a taxi? So what was I supposed to do? Oh, Mum, give me a break. 
You're just making things really difficult. Anyway, you're home. That's the important thing. If she thinks I'm just going to forget what she said. She's got another thing coming. It'll blow over, you'll see. Let's follow the blood trails, Inspector. What have we got then, Doctor? The daughter was found in here. Mm -hmm. So she's alive then? Alive, but unconscious. She's in hospital. Her mother was killed in here. blood on the dressing table here. Yes. The initial assault was here. Yeah. So she must have crawled in here. Well, she'd have been on her hands and knees and half a dozen stab wounds in her back. Her hands and feet were bound before she was killed. Was the door to No. Her head was smashed against the bathroom wall and uh, she was left there. What time did this happen? Between 8.30 and 11. All right, thanks, Doc. I couldn't stop bleeding. I held her. I couldn't do anything. Help us. Did you move the body, Father? Yes. I tried to cradle her, to hold her. What position was she in when you found her? She was on her knees. Well, facing the dressing table? Yes. Did she say anything? About what time was it? Uh, uh, about, um, 11. Your emergency call was logged at 17 minutes past 11. Was it? Um, well, I tried to say that um, I could have been there 10 or 15 minutes. I see. Why were you here? Father, why were you here at that hour? Well, I was passing on my way home and I'd been to see one of my parishioners who was ill. I heard the alarm. Woman. I couldn't save her, I tried, but I couldn't. You knew her then? Yes. When I was upstairs, I couldn't help noticing that she was a Catholic. Did you give her the last rites? Yes, of course. Why did you hesitate? She'd been excommunicated. Oh. Why was that? I'm sorry, I can't tell you that that's privileged information. Oh, Jack, uh, that's all you, 
sort of this morning. Burglary gone wrong with it? No, no sign of anything been stolen. Hey, hey, just a minute. Well, you can, that's my filing cabinet. Just carry on. Well, wait a minute. What's happening? Have they found a bomb or what? The building inspector has found asbestos. Oh. We need to move to temporary accommodation immediately. Well, I need an incident room. Where are we going? The old brewery warehouse. Well, that hasn't been used for years. It's the most secure place that we can find. Emergency phone lines are going in, and they use a mobile communications truck as a comm center, and you need to find a replacement for George Tula. And all that needs to happen before midday so that we're fully operational. Just, just be careful with that. Is the canteen closed? What? Well, I haven't any breakfast. Mobile canteen facilities will be available in a few hours. A few hours? Your sergeant's still in theatre. It's a brain aneurysm, a hemorrhage. It was from the fall, I'm afraid. Can develop after an accident. That's why we kept him in. It's his wife here. She's in a relative's room. I'll let you know how he gets on. Yes, all right. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, but I have a word without. We just uh, no. You leave, her, Jack. Um, I'll keep you posted. You get back. There's plenty to do. Go. Okay. Mm. I don't think now is a good time for you to talk to her. Do you? No. Yeah, no, perhaps you're right. He will be all right. He... Just about. I feel as though my right hand's missing. Yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, now, Jack, the chief constable has requested the national crime faculty to recommend a forensic psychologist to work with you. A profiler? Yes. Look, I don't need someone juggling smoke who's going to try and tell me who the killer is. You want to spend money? Get me some more coppers. You know, I need to put a team in place. Well, it's been decided. Um, who's replacing George? Razor. Razor Sharp. D.S. Sharp. Oh, the Surrey, of course. Well, only a bit of a plodder. Yeah. Double checks everything. That's just the sort of person that I need. Besides that, he's had a similar investigation on his patch a couple of years ago. Well, very well. Uh, Jack, um, please remember the forensic psychologist is here at the Chief Constable's behest. So, um, don't forget your table manners. Ah, Bennett, there you are. Right, put the kettle on. If I don't get a cup of tea soon, the whole day will be unbearable. Yes, go. stay around to help pick them up. <laughs> if it's in a good cause. Actually, maybe you could help me. Depends what you're after. Inspector Frost. Now, there's a coincidence. Uh, see if you can find my fish, would you? Ah, right, no, that goes in the basement, no. <clears throat> Ah, there you are, Razor. Well captured. Well, I only got word this morning, then I had to dig out these files on the old murder case. Not a medical worker. Well, you'll need to be around here this morning. Nice to have you in on this one. Good to see you again. Yeah. What about George? Oh, not so good. 
Well, let's uh, open those files, see what we're up against, shall we? Hi, DC Bennett. Who are you, and what are you doing in here? Gov, it's pathology. They've done the post-mortem. Right, thank you. That's where we'll be. Inspector, I'm Martine Phillips. Yes? National Crime Faculty. And? Oh, you're the psychologist? Yes. Oh, well, this morning is full of surprises, isn't it? So what do we call you? Do we call you uh, Doctor or Martine? Marty's fine. Right, OK. Well, that is D.C. Bennett. That is D.S. Sharp. I am D.I. Frost. D.C. Bennett will brief you. I will talk to you when I get back from looking at the nasty bits. All right, come along, Razor. All right. Bloody hell, Bennett. Can't you sort out a better way of getting in and out of this place? Oh, there you go. He's been up half the night. We haven't got a canteen yet, so he hasn't had his breakfast. Things are worse than I thought. See you later. Come on, Razor. Look sharp. Inspector. What? I am used to cynical and occasionally antagonistic police officers, but I am here at the request of the National Crime Faculty and your chief constable. So don't treat me like a first-year probationary officer. Then we will afford you the professional courtesy of consulting with you the moment we return from the mortuary. Come on. I need to see the victim. You what? It might help me understand the killer. All right. You had your breakfast this morning? Yes. You're lucky. Don't lose it. She'd had a pregnancy terminated. When? About 12 weeks ago. And as for this attack, there are defensive cuts on the victim's hands. Maybe she was trying to get past him to get to her daughter, then. It could have been tormenting her. Yes, yes, I think it could well have been a tormenting action. Stab wounds indicate a single edge knife about 12 centimetres long. How much is that in old money? About five inches. Five inches, thank you. There are no signs of violence to her face, which means he probably ordered her onto her knees. I mean, he didn't knock her down. No, but there are these marks on her forehead, possibly from the killer covering her face with his hand. And there are burn marks from the carpet on her knees and on her forearms up to her elbows. No sign of any sexual assault? Uh, no obvious sign. How many times did he stab her? Seven wounds in the back, quite savage blows. And rapid. You think it could have been done in a frenzy, yeah? Almost climactic. What, you mean like it was having... Having an orgasm, yes. This was a sexual attack. Where did that come from? You don't know that. Yes, I do, Inspector. sausage or a bacon sarnie or something? No, thanks. <clears throat> oh, by the way, it is tradition in this neck of the woods for the visitor to buy the first round. Oh. Uh, no, you're all right. I've got it. Mm. Oh, blimey, you're being generous, aren't you? Yeah, well, I'm a visitor as well, sort of. I'll tell you what, knives scare the hell out of me. I think in this case, the knifing is down to pure repressed male anger and rage. Your killer is living an emotionally shut down life. That could apply to half the male population in the country. I agree. Mostly men of a certain age. That murder you were involved in a couple of years ago, is it the same MO? Can't say so. Killer broke into the house, tied the victim, stabbed her repeatedly. No sexual attack in the real sense of the word. <laughs> same ritualistic pattern, hands tied. Taped. And she was on her hands and knees. But her wrists were taped to the foot of the bed. But was the victim the same sort of age as this one? Hmm. Well, that's a good enough connection to me. Hmm. What I don't understand is why the murderer didn't do in the daughter as well. She wasn't the object of his attack. How can we be sure of that? The victim's age and background helps define the killer's profile and motivation. The ritual he performs is psychosexual. There'll be similarities to this and other killings. 
Keith. You think there's been others besides this one and the one in Surrey? Yes, absolutely. You can bet your career on it. Did she mention my name before she died? No. She was unconscious when I found her. She didn't say anything. I'm sorry, I can't be of any more comfort. She killed my child. I know what she did. I expect you know everyone's secrets. It was impossible to tell her how I felt. I had no one to turn to. You could have turned to me. You, father. She hated you. Huh? For what you did to her. Oh, she hurt me, but what you did to her was far worse. brought up Lucy on her own, didn't she? Yes. Her husband died ten years ago. She was an incredibly strong woman, emotionally. She lived for Lucy. They were more like sisters than mother and daughter. I don't know whether this is any comfort to you, but a local priest, Father Rose, told me that he gave her the last rites. Yes, that is the comfort, thank you. Uh, we already knew. Father Rose, he came in. Did you know that your sister had been excommunicated from the church? The dead woman's body was tied in a manner of supplication. He wanted to degrade her. I think it highly likely this man has killed in a similar manner to this before. So, if he's the same man who committed the Surrey murder two years ago, he's had a free hand to ply his trade elsewhere. And it wasn't around here. He's been playing an away game. So, any killing similar to this and unsolved from any division in the country, we need to know about. Yeah, listen. Just, just a minute. Um, according to the priest's statement, he said that uh, he went into Helen Cross House because he heard the alarm going off. Right? Now, is there anything wrong with that statement? Checked. Attending officers turned the alarm off. Hmm. Yeah, all right. Well, let's just get our brains in gear, shall we? <laughs> Supposing it wasn't that way around. Hmm? What would happen if it was the other way around? If the alarm didn't go off when the killer went into the house? Only when he came out. Hmm. Because had the alarm gone off on the way in, he wouldn't have had the time to assault the daughter and tie up and murder her mother. He deliberately tripped the alarm. Hmm. He called you to the murder scene. He wanted to show you his handiwork.
I just wanted to spare her. I had nothing to do with thee. I had nothing to say thee. But then you said you excommunicated her. They told you that. Do you know what that must have done to her? Do you think I didn't feel her pain and her sorrow? I cast a drift without the comfort of the Holy Mother Church. Do you know why I did it? She was my sister. Then you know I had no choice. You went to the mission. What else was I supposed to do? She trusted you. You betrayed her. I did what I was obliged to do. Was I supposed to fail at my duty? You immigrant. We both are. Why do you get involved in cases like this? It's my professional life, Inspector. What? Get inside the head of a vicious killer? I suppose it's a bit like going down a dark alley without a torch. Oh. So you get a bit of a thrill out of it, do you? No, Inspector. I'm going warily into uncharted territory. That's what attracts me to forensic psychology. The jigsaw pieces of a killer's mind are not neatly defined, although their behaviour sometimes can be predicted. A case like this presents me with opportunities I don't intend to miss. Mm. I'll see if I can help, dear Sharp. Yeah, I would. Needs all the help he can get, he does. Knock, knock! Who's there? Arthur! Arthur who? Arthur, any more at home like you? Hello, Trick. How's he going? All right. Uh, look, Jack, if you want something done, go through the proper channels. I can't help you. I mean, look at this mess. I'm going through the proper channels, aren't I? You and me. Now, tell me, what do you know about this Dr. Martine Phillips? Martine? Not a lot. Well, neither do I, but I'd like to. But I heard she was very effective. There yeah, she is, in more ways than one. I don't know. I'm too interested. My psychological assessment doesn't suss out enough professional distance from her. Too what? It's too keen. Oh, we can't have that around here, though, can we? No. Yeah, all right, all right, Jack. I'll see what I can find out. Ah, do. That's uh, what I like to hear. And by way of thanks, I shall make sure you get a nice new feather duster. <laughs> Marty Phillips, the good doctor sent to smooth psychological balm on our troubled brow. It's not bad. Well, she's a bit young, isn't she? A bit full of herself. Oh, not really. She's got a lot of qualifications. Yeah, I bet she has. <laughs> Fancy her, do you? Blimey, I'd be daft not to. Yeah. I tell you, Gov, I reckon sometimes being a bit older isn't a bad thing. Really? Only I was wondering whether it was your moody, enigmatic personality with its scintillating wit that she fancied. Or whether it was something more basic, like, you know, sex. Sex, I hope. Well, yeah, we all live in hope. Now, listen, if you do manage to hit the jackpot on the psychologist's couch, as it were, try and do it outside of working hours. She is a hired help, after all. If I'm right about the killer tripping the alarm on the way out, he must have had a clever way of getting in. So we missed something. Yeah, well, it stands to reason. He smashed the pane in the door. The glass would have spread across the carpet and right across the kitchen floor. Which it was. Yes. But according to the report, there was no trace of any glass being walked through the rest of the house. So he broke the glass on the way out to make it look like it broke in? Exactly. So either he was invited in or he had a key. No, who would have a key? Well, what exactly is this place? Well, the church set it up as a school centre for youngsters. It was all voluntary. You know, we tried to teach them the basics. I'm rather glad of it myself right now. Ward off grief from your heart. Put away trouble from your presence. It's Ecclesiastes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, have you got a key to your sister-in-law's house? A key? No. No, I was one of those things you keep meaning to organise. And... How about the alarm? Oh, I think she gave up on that months ago. It was going off all times of the day and night. 
When you were interviewed by DC Bennett, you said that your sister-in-law was seeing a man called Steve Markham. Yes. Are you the man that was making all the fuss at the hospital? That's right. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. So you disapprove of him then, do you? I don't like him. He's unreliable. And he caused Helen a great deal of unhappiness. They split up about, oh, three months ago. Everyone gives up on him sooner or later. Meaning what? He has no control over his life. He's lost his business, well, such as it is, a couple of times. I gave him a job. Well, couldn't manage. You're a product manager for a building supply company? Yes. Markham was at the Antiques Market the day that Helen was murdered, is that right? That's right. And they spoke? I didn't hear too much, but um, Lucy was going to sleep over at her friend's that night. She needed a lift, and Markham offered to take her. Now, Helen definitely said no to that. So Lucy wasn't supposed to be at home the night that Helen was murdered? I suppose not, no. Did Markham have a key? Well, probably. Uh, but um, you, you know she had other relationships. Other than Markham? Well, well, over the years, yes. I mean, she was an attractive woman. Was Markham jealous? Well, perhaps. Uh, he was fairly abusive at one stage. I, I do know that. All right. Thank you very much. Why did Helen Croft shut you? Um... Just didn't work out. Friction, was it? No. We were working things out. You got on all right with Lucy, though? We got on well, yes. You fancy her, didn't you? What? Well, could your attraction to Mrs. Croft's daughter be a reason for the friction between you? Well, for God's sake! Is that why you split up? Because you were coming on to the daughter? No! Well, when you were at the hospital, you were trying to get in to see her. Weren't you? It was a bit pushy. No, don't deny it. I saw you. I was there. Bloody hell. You people. I knew you were going to try and implicate me in this. Why would we want to do that? Because it's what you do. You've no idea what this is doing to me. Yes, I liked Lucy very much. She's a great kid, but I would never dream of harming her or Helen. We never asked you if you did. And it's what you're implying, isn't it? The family didn't want you hanging about, either. There was a chance that Helen and I might get back together again. The family didn't want that. I don't care about that. All I want now is to see that Lucy gets through this. Did you have a key to her house? No. We respected each other's privacy. Were you the father of the child that Helen Croft had terminated? Did you want her to keep it? Yes. But I knew that she couldn't. It was too dangerous. Medically speaking, I mean. But you were upset? Of course. Angry. No. Just sad. Thank you. Well, what do you think? I was a cough mixture at this fellow, is No. Ask around the boozers. I'm gonna go down and see how George is. I should know that he could die. 
It may sound spiteful, but if that happened, I would blame you. I'm going through the statements to see if there's anything that doesn't sound right. You know what I can't understand? Is that if Helen Croft was dying, she must have known that her daughter was in the other room, badly injured, so... Why wasn't she crawling to get to her? It's the most natural thing in the world to do, isn't it? Obviously, she was trying to tell us something. Well, obviously. But what was so important about that dressing table? I'm going back to the statements. Yeah, go on, you do that. Somehow, yeah, brightened things up a bit. You look like a Belisha beacon. Well, you've got to give yourself the best chance you can, I reckon. Having dinner with her tonight. You what? She's pain. Wants to get the feel of the Surrey investigation. Well, as long as she doesn't get the feel of something else, because she'll be the one that needs psychological help. Come on, come on, what you got? The restaurant says that Markham was there pretty much about the time he said he was, but one of the waiters is off today, so I've got to double-check that later on. All right, come on, what else? Uh, Lucy Croft left a friend's house sometime after nine. She couldn't walk home from there. We're going to check if she had a mobile, chase it down. Mm-hmm. What about our father, Rose? What about him? Well, he was the first man on the crime scene, covered in the victim's blood. Oh, this whole thing suddenly better. I don't know what yet, but I know he's telling porkies and priests shouldn't do that, should they? You think Father Rose is in the frame for this? Hmm? Yeah, well, why not? Uh, oh, right, thank you. Ah. Forensics found black cloth fibres caught against Ellen Croft's skin. Yeah, well, Father Rose says he moved her and tried to comfort her. Yes, but how do you account for the fibres being on her skin under her nightdress? So, was our dear father compromising our crime scene by comforting the victim, or... Was he giving a completely different meaning to uh, giving her the last rites? for a national search for similar murders, established other killings in three different police authorities. Three? Over a six-year period. How many murders? Five. Five. My God, she's right. We've got a serial killer on our hands. Sir? Yes? Lucy Croft has regained consciousness. Right, thank you. Did she say anything? She just asked for her mum. I asked the, uh, the doctor to tell her I couldn't. All right. I need to talk to her for a minute. It won't help you, Inspector. She has traumatic amnesia. She can't remember anything. Is that permanent? Not necessarily. But uh, it might not be a bad thing for her if it was. It's all right. I'd like you to stay, please, Mrs. Ford. 
This young policeman, I need to ask you if you saw or remember anything that could help us. <laughs> Sorry. This man that attacked you, I mean, could you sense anything about him? I mean, was he a big man or was he slightly built? Was he wearing gloves? Maybe you could remember the smell of his aftershave. No, I'm sorry. I can't remember anything. Inspector, okay. please, can we... Yes, all right, all right, all right. It's all right. Don't worry, you're safe now. No one can hurt you. Whoever did this, I will get them. I promise you. Let's face it, Inspector, people who do this just disappear into the night until they kill again, and the odds are on their side. How many killers are out there? How many will ever be caught? This one will be. Then let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. I don't think I know that one. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. And, and if we all look to our faith, you will be shown the way. It will be lit, and you will see. Well, I'd better get off home and make sure I pay the light bill. <laughs> We've been praying for your sergeant. We, we heard he'd been injured, and God willing, he, he will be safely delivered. Yes. Thank you. Better. I'm sorry, I didn't need to come in. Quiet as a church mouse, be. It's rather late. Hmm. But still, priests and policemen work 24 hours a day, don't they, for their sins? It's just that I need to ask a few more questions, that's all. You see, we found fibres from your clothes on Helen Croft's skin. Like I told you, I put her on her side. Her nightdress was above her waist. I turned her over, I held her. I just wanted to give her some dignity. So you pulled her nightdress back down? Yes. Yes, I'm sorry if I caused any problems because of that. No, it's just that we need to know who did what, that's all. You see, I've had a chat with Helen Cross's sister, and she told me that she and Helen shared a medical condition that made it very dangerous for either of them to have children. I didn't know that. Didn't you? It seems that Lucy was conceived at some considerable risk. She must have been a very brave woman. <laughs> yes, she was. Helen had a few boyfriends after her husband died, but she couldn't risk another pregnancy, not at her age and in her medical condition. I'm sorry, what does this to do with me? Well, there's a reason you had her excommunicated, isn't it? I'm sorry, I can't comment on that. Well, you know what I think? I think she told you in confessional that she had an abortion, and you used it against her. You broke her confidentiality. Our faith is very clear on this issue. I had no choice. I had to recommend excommunication. Oh, rules are rules, are they? Well, I've got a few of my own. And if she told you anything that will help me catch her murderer, I want to hear about it, and you're obliged by law to tell me. She said nothing. You've already abused her trust. I'm sure there isn't anything. Nothing.
You know what, Father? If it had been anybody else other than a priest who messed up my murder scene, covered themselves with blood and marched it all over the place, I would have had him charged by now. You can't think I would commit murder, you can't! Well, that's all a matter of belief. Oh, and evidence. There's something you're not telling me. So if ever you feel the need to unburden your own soul, my confessional is open 24 hours. Every day, including Sundays. for a change. Good morning, Razor. Hi, sir. Dr. Martin, you said that you were going through everyone's statements. Well, from what I can see, Steve Markin's remarks seem to indicate a desperately lonely man, high on anxiety and prone to sudden acts of anger. Tell me. I'm going to have to be careful what I say to you in the future, aren't I? Yes, I think you should. Is it all right? Come on, what else? The priest is frightened. Guilty of something. Everything he says about not being able to save her. He's taking the blame on for something, and it's almost a sense of him projecting his own fears that he can't save himself. So there's nothing definite to pinpoint either Markham or the priest? This man's planning is meticulous. It's part of his control over his victims. And he's getting better. The more women he kills, he's gaining experience. But... But what? His killing pattern's altered. This is his sixth kill in six years, but with Herne Croft, he's two months early. He usually kills in the autumn. Yeah? Me you are. Well, either he's getting more ambitious, or this was an unplanned murder. Something extra. Are you trying to tell me that he could kill again fairly soon? Yes. I must see you as very important. We have to talk this thing through. I can't see you now. How can I? I'm looking after Lucy. Sophia. No, I can't. Oh, for heaven's sake, you don't know what's going to happen to both of us if they keep on digging. Oh, please. We have to know what to say. But these are the areas where the other killings took place over the past five years, yeah? That's right. Right. So, what aren't we looking at uh, here, 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 here? Uh, pubs. No, not pubs. Look there, there. There, there. Churches. Churches, yes. Symbols of light and hope for many a poor soul. I'd opt for the pubs. Yeah, I know you would. But is there any chance that our Father Rose had visited these areas? There's parishes around here. You don't know anything about going to church, do you? I've been to funerals mostly. About the one, I'm waiting for the other. Yes. No, you see, look, priests are like doctors, aren't they? Well, they're like locums. So... If our father Rose had been moving from parish to parish, it would be interesting to know where and when, wouldn't it? You don't want to get Mr. Mullet all steamed up because she's snapping at the heels of a priest. Sharpsy, I did. Never mind snapping at his heels. I'm the Witchfinder General, me. Transgressors are my speciality. Gov. Hmm? Bennett followed Markham to Helen Croft's house. Markham tried to get inside. Come on, Markham. Give it up. <laughs> 
This was found in the boot of your car. You were doing a runner. You went to the house to try and recover a ring you gave to Helen Croft. Yes. Sadly for you, there's nothing in the house. We removed it all for evidence. I didn't know that. Now, of course you didn't. Ah, oh, there you are. Benny, come here. Bring that over here. Right, put it on there. Right, Markham. This is all of the late Helen Croft's jewellery. I want you to look in there and find the ring that you said that you gave her. Oh, and before you start, I think I ought to mention, we put a few pieces of our own in there just to help you focus your attention. All right? Off you go. Take your time. I don't see it. No. It all sounds rather lame, doesn't it? I'm having money problems. That ring was valuable. Your alibi is still dodgy, Markham. So what else could you have been up to on the night of the murder? I went to the restaurant, then I went to the cinema. At... You didn't pitch up for your weekly AA meeting. No, we've checked. And we're not talking about your usual roadside services either. You lied. Yes. Yes! I was frightened. I had a few drinks. Well, yeah, more than a few drinks. I, 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 I... I don't remember anything. No, Lucy Croft, she doesn't remember anything either. But that's for a very different reason. You know what I think, Markham? I think that you went round Helen Croft's house to nick the jewellery you knew she kept there. That's not true. No. You're up to your eyes in debt. You're doing a runner. And you know what the telephone company told me? The last call Lucy Croft made was to your number. You were the one who took her home. No, 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 I, I didn't. Uh, it's like I say, you know, I had a few drinks. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, she did phone, but, but, but I didn't go and get her. Oh, come off it. Benny, take him down the neck. Look, I didn't do anything. He had the time and the motive. She'd fallen pregnant, she dumped him. He's fairly unstable. Yeah, I know, but what have we got? Circumstantial at best. You can take this now, go for Yeah, go on, off you go. Hey, just do it. Yeah. Where have I seen that before? It's a locket. Picture of Lucy in there. It was on her dressing table. Mm. Helen Croft wouldn't have crawled across the floor to get to this, though, would she? Not when she knew her daughter was a few feet away in the next room. No. Well, there you go. Still, desperate moments, eh? There's insufficient evidence against him, Jack. Well, I'll arrest him for burglary if I have no other choice. Any brief would have him out of custody in seconds on what we've got. We just can't hold him. Unless, uh... Do you think otherwise, Dr. Phillips? He's not your killer. You don't know that. He never gives me a straight answer. You drink as heavily as he does. You live a devious life. He thinks differently. His reality is not ours. Lying is a way of life. Look, he was the one who picked up Lucy Croft on the night of the murder. He might just as well have followed her into the house. Now, I don't need a degree in psychology to work that one out. That's enough, Jack. Well, for heaven's sake. Someone like Markham would leave calling cards, let alone traces of DNA at a murder scene. He's not in sufficient control to be that methodical. You cannot guarantee that. No, but I won't put my reputation on the line to give you something you don't have. Thank you, Dr. Phillips. He stays in the area. We take his passport. It's the best we can do. So he walks. What about round-the-clock surveillance? That would take me six teams of officers. I, I just don't have that budget. No, we never do, do we? Anyway, you heard anything about George? No. A bit of divine intervention wouldn't go amiss for any of us, would it? There, information received. Do you want? Oh, Dr. Martine Phillips worked on two rape cases for the Met and a murder inquiry of the Kent. Mm -hmm. And and so far, three books and four television appearances, and a very healthy private practice building up. So she's feathering her nest on the back of police investigations. Yeah, seems she's building a media career for herself. Apparently, this psychological profiling is a cutthroat business. Yeah, well, she's in the right game, then, isn't she? Hmm? <laughs> How did you come by this information so quick? Apparently, she had a fling with one of the CID blokes in Kent. He says she used him and then dumped him. Oh. Really? 
Footprints were found at three of the murder scenes, but they didn't match. No, well, he's too organised to be careless. Well, I think, I think the killer goes in, murders his victims, and then destroys his clothing. So he's got fresh gear every time. And forensic now say there were different types of fibres were found on Helen Croft's body, not just those from the priest. Mm. I've got three murder teams, 60 police officers working on this, and all we come up with is more and more ifs, buts, and maybes. Anyway, have a look. Oi. Have a look at this, will you? What am I looking for? Her hair has been snipped. Look at the ridge. So she had a haircut? No, no. Look at one of the other victims. Look, there. Look, a piece is missing. It's been cut from behind the ear. Mm. And the other one. Oh, there, look. See? Right. Dr. Phillips, can we have a moment of your time here, please? It's like a trophy. Exactly. Look at this. He's been cutting their hair. What does that mean to you? Well, he'll remember the fragrance long after he's left the hair. It's a mental stimulus. He'll look at that lock of hair and have total recall of the killing. And the thrill it gave him. There you are find the trophy, and you find the killer. Easy, eh? Girl, hmm? it's been a murder. No, 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 no. This isn't the place for you. I need to see the body. Not now. You get inside when everyone else is finished. Not before. What's the TID? Like the same colour to me. Yeah, it's even more right. You can bet on it. They're all similar wounds to the last murder. Um, same sort of knife, 12, 13 centimetres, 5 inches long, uh, single edge blade. Could you just check the hair for me? Yep. What am I looking for? I want to see if the hair has been cut on the ear. This little bit looks like it's just been snipped. Significant? Yes. Shall I carry on? Yes, carry on, please. Yeah. I told you to wait. Inspector, is it the same killer? Yes, I think it is. Uh, well, then whatever timetable he's working to, he's torn it up. Well, why would he do that? Because you're getting close to him. I think it's someone you've already interviewed and he knows you're closing in on him. I have an idea I think might help. I want to talk to the priest. We all agree he's hiding something. I'll go to confession, I'll prompt him, and I'll listen. Well, that's police finance work. Um, that could be seen as entrapment, couldn't it, sir? Whereas if I do it, it's just a professional analysis of a suspect's responses. I won't have any investigation against the church that cannot be supported by a reasonable suspicion. A priest. You can't seriously suspect him. I'm not prejudiced. I'll suspect anyone. Anyway, you know what the old saying is, don't you? Stronger the faith, closer the devil. You're not going to let her do this? It wasn't my idea, it was hers. You're putting her in danger. Nobody knows who she is. It's just a one-off idea to see if she can find out anything that we can't. She's a professional. She's been building her career on this sort of stuff. She's helping us with a series of murders, that's all. You know what I think? I think she's doing it for this, for the dot, for the fame, for the glory. You just be careful you don't end up as a chapter in her life. You don't have to worry about me. Yeah, well, I do. We need decent coppers. You worry about yourself. Anything happens to her, you're the one responsible. The trouble is there'll be another casualty along the way. What do you mean, George Toulon? For all I know. Well, don't you blame me for that as well. You blame yourself. Yes, well, wouldn't you? Not much point in denying it now, is there? Oh, bloody hell. 
phone her hotel and tell her to stay where she is. think he didn't kill you? I don't know for sure, but I think it's because I don't fit the victim's profiles. I mean, he chooses when and how they die. He's in control of that. So he was warning you off? Yeah. I'm a threat. I'm interfering. Look, it's down to you now, but I'm concerned that you're running out of time. Thank you. Thank you. the media this morning that she is assisting us. Well, the harm's done, though, anyway. I don't think we can pin her attack on the priest. He said he was stuck in a traffic jam on his way from doing his rounds at the hospital. And you believe him, I hope. Well, there are roadworks. I'm getting the CCTV cameras checked. See if we can spot him. I mean, I still think he's hiding something. Anyway, we found out that the parishioner that he said he saw on the night of the murder works the night shift at the supermarket. You mean there's a discrepancy in the time of his hour? Yes, about half an hour's worth. Which means he could have been at the murder scene earlier than he said he was. But that's not definite. No, because the parishioner has got a bad timekeeper's record. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting it all wrong. Maybe the priest is shielding somebody. Jack, I don't want to hear on the news that you're harassing a priest. I've already had the bishop on the phone. All right. I'll tread lightly. As lightly as I can. I told you it was too risky. Well, she's become a victim of her own media profile. Anyway, where are you off to? One of the dead women worked in an office in town a couple of years ago. Yeah, which means what? Is there a connection then, Tommy? No, not much to go on. But the office spot's opposite an old folks' home. Yeah, which means what, exactly? Oh, I don't know. Father Rose does a regular visit there. Worth checking out, just in case. Anyway, can't do any harm. No stone unturned and all that. All right, fair enough. Listen, I'm going to look in on George. And then I'm going to make a nuisance of myself with Father Rose. Oi. Marty is playing for high stakes. You know that as well as I do. Treat it for what it is. I've got two murdered women who are closely linked to five others over the last five years. I've got two suspects. One is a dodgy priest, so I'll have the hell to pay for hounding him, and the other is an alcoholic ex-boyfriend who doesn't know what time of the day it is. The murders are spread over three counties, and the killer hasn't left any DNA. On the top of that, Razor has got the hots for the forensic psychologist that's been sent to help us. And she's been attacked and threatened last night. Ah, oh, I don't know. I'm getting nowhere fast. I really need a breakthrough in this case. I don't care. Why are you telling me all this? George, welcome back to the land of the living. Oh. You're not. I promise you, you're on the, you're on the menu, I'm huh? dying for a drink of water. Huh. Right, OK, yeah. Go away. There you go. There you go. There you go. George, careful. Mm. There you go. <coughs> All right, wait. Don't you choke to death, because he'll blame me for that as well. Thank you, nurse. Touch more brandy next time. Next time, I'm keeping you on terra firma. <laughs> God. Clear of. I need my beauty sleep. Yeah. I should have done some plastic surgery while I were doing that. Yeah. I'm really glad you're on the men, George. <laughs> All right. I'll be off. Some of us have got some work to do.
Good result on George, then. Better help at my end would be appreciated. Just this one lost sheep. what I was thinking. Sylvia and I love each other deeply. And you excommunicated her sister. You hypocrite. Were you involved with her as well? Of course not. Well, you could have been as far as anyone was concerned. She could have been threatening to tell everyone, you know, tell the bishop. Was that it? No. I don't understand why you're saying this. Well, I'll tell you what. If I ask your boss, and I don't mean him up there, I'll find out that you've been involved with female parishioners before. This time it's different. Sylvia and I love each other. There have been other women. Sylvia, please don't listen to me. It seems to me that you and the Padre have been revisiting the Seventh Commandment. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Maybe you've got your commandments mixed up. You know, the Sixth Commandment. Thou shalt not kill. You had the time. Was it the period? Hmm? Was it? Can I have a look at that locket, please? Thank you. Sir, your phone was off. Hmm? Yes, I know that. Your vocational calling won't survive this scandal. I can promise you that. Where no, was it? There are empty offices opposite the retirement home. The one for this double glazing company. The last victim worked in the same building. And the connection is what? Well, it's a bit circumstantial, but 12 months ago, Bill Ford worked as a product manager at the same double glazing company. You can't get a better place for copies of house keys than that. This is four. Can you come here a moment, please? Whose hair is that? Um, it's Lucy's. From when she was a baby. That is not baby's hair. Oops. Where do you get this locket? Uh, my husband bought one for me and one for Helen. From Steve Markham. As a celebration of Lucy's birth. Markham sold these lockets to your husband? Yes. Some time ago, your husband gave Markham a job. Was that when he was working for the double glazing company? Find Markham. Dig him out from whatever hole he is hiding in. Right, man, it hit. Sit down, try to sit down, please. Before your sister died, she was reaching for something. And I believe it was the locket that your husband gave her. Why? She was trying to tell us who killed her. Oh, God. I'm afraid either your husband or Stephen Markham has killed seven women, including your sister. Now, 
uh, we've got it down to four possible victims. Here, 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 and here. These four women have all had double glazing work done on their houses over the past year or so. If he's staying on our patch, it's certainly one of these. Right. Which one do we concentrate on? This one. That's his next victim. What do you reckon, Sarge? I don't see how he would know which house to go for. I think it's a hell of a risk. <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> on your side, Inspector. Hmm. Yeah, that. And a stab vest. (laughs) 
You spend your whole life being decent, being gentle. It's not what they want. So they walk all over you. They drown you in contempt. And she, she rejected me. Frost, the bitch rejected me. And she went with the likes of Marcus. Hey, see, you know you're, you're not good enough. And you teach them. Yeah, you show them, you show them. Bitches, what a man can do. Do you understand? No, not in a million years. Yes. How did you know? But tonight, how did you know where I'd be? The house is next to this storage yard. It was lit up like a football stadium. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Your ego. You couldn't resist telling me, could you? Are you staying in bed on your city With the good doctor? <laughs> no, but well, I'm taking it for a night out in the West End. Uh, it's a surprise. Oh, nice one. Right, are we, uh, are we all clear in here? Well, just about, sir. Good result, Jack. Oh dear. Just good old-fashioned police work. Well, as important as uh, behavioural profiling can be, and as vital as forensic science is, it comes down to the copper on the ground to collate and refine all the evidence. Yes, thank you, sir. It's a fine time to find that. We're moving out! I thought everything was going okay between us. There never was anything between us. How could you think that? Sweet man, but did you honestly think there was an attraction? Come on. Uh, of course not. Stupid of me. Maybe we could for a drink sometime if we work on another investigation. Sure. Hmm. Well, that's a lot, eh? The three musketeers. Yes, well, thankfully, you adhere to regulations for once and wore a stab vest. Yes, good job I did. I think they ought to be made compulsory. Especially in the canteen, they should. <laughs> Your hand, it's really bad, is it? Well, yeah, well, you know, it's one of those things. When it happens, you don't feel a thing, and then afterwards, it's just incessant pain. Not like working for you, then. Right, well, I think we'd better leave George to get some rest. Um, come along. You're skiving, I know you are. I'll be back. Looks as though he's coming through with flying colours. Yes, but it doesn't change the way I feel about you. Mm -hmm. 